I would like to open the floor to questions. First, we go to Dennis Lilac from the Evening Journal. Denise Lilac, Evening Journal. Minister, is it true that immigration has risen by over 10.5% in the past 12 months under your leadership? Now, the figures show that, according to the underlying research, it must be recognized that the general consensus is, at the end of the day, taking all things into consideration, the long and the short of it is, it goes without saying, that once you understand the true issue, that on the one hand, knowing that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, I maintain the first thing to be noted is, by contrast, and be that it may, we must begin by examining the advice. Because, to illustrate the extent of the problem, we only need to summarise the purpose. And we already know that as a result of the policies. And given these other arguments, there can be no doubt, ultimately, that you can see all the benefits. Although one of the other risks is finally the answer you're looking for. Jacqueline Crackerly from the Staunton Gazette, Minister. A leaked document says you plan to provide additional support for low-income single-parent families. What can you tell us about this worthy cause? Fake news. Uh, uh, Minister, is it true that your party plans to raise VAT for books and printed materials? I'm very glad you raised this issue because the dairy industry has been in decline in recent years and it is important to support our farmers in every way possible which is why we have signed a deal with several car manufacturers to project jobs on the production line and ultimately open 50 new schools. Sue Plumson from the Online Investigator. Minister, the manifesto lacks information about your party strategy for combating climate change. Can you elaborate? Ah, uh, yes. I knew you would ask me that, which is why you will find all the information you need in the graph, which you can see behind me now. So I see no need to go into any further detail. Next question. Uh, but I... Next question, please. Minister, what are your plans for healthcare funding? And another question, if I may, does your party support the privatization of the health service? Now look, this is not a time to get bogged down in side issues. As you all know, and here I come to the plain historical fact, which is a very thorny issue. So subsequently, we live in a world where, when all is said and done, but not forgetting to consider the bigger picture, or indeed overlook the detail, what I would like to do is shed real light on this matter. Nevertheless, it turns out as a point of departure, in spite of the need to distinguish between several different aspects, it could almost be said that one cannot deny the conclusion, which is a task for the cabinet and the cabinet alone. Zoe Retriever from the Institute of Research. Who do you think is to blame for the recent increase in hit and run crime in the capital? Well, as you know, the Ministry of Transport has recently moved to a new office. But the ministry has nothing to do with crime. Well, that doesn't alter my argument. And I think the answer is clear for all to see. Your manifesto implies quite strongly when describing the opposition that your party will be more extreme. Do you think that wise in the current climate? Now, now, please don't misconstrue the manifesto. What I think you'll find it says is that they are not as extreme as us, which to be quite honest, and I am above all an honest person, and I like to be frank about these things, is why we deserve your vote. Thank you for your questions. That is all for today.